They really make a great trio. Yo, what's up everyone? Trayman1 here and welcome back to another Pokemon Journeys anime review. Today we're covering episode 31. This episode, I had no big expectations for. I saw that it was focused on Sota and his friend with the Feebas and I was like, eh? But I really do like how it turned out, especially for the growth and development of Chloe. Now let's go ahead and get to the summaries and my thoughts. The episode actually begins with Chloe getting a phone call from her little brother Sota. And I got to say, I love the focus that they've been putting on Chloe in this series so far. It was so crazy because right before the hiatus, her last appearance was in episode 20, where Ash and Go were restating their goals. And she did seem interested as well. But after that, we haven't seen her again until the recent Yamper episode. And since then, she has been a current stable. She ends up actually coming to Ash and Go for help since they're big experts on Pokemon. And basically, one of Sota's friends is having trouble with her Pokemon. It's also interesting to point out, she does still get annoyed about how many Pokemon Go's been catching. So, yeah, her character isn't fully where we want it to be yet with her being along with the group. But it's slowly changing, which I'm liking the slow progress and it's building up to something great. The Pokemon ends up being Feebas and Kaharu and the others decide that they're going to take this Pokemon to the lab so that it can see the other water type Pokemon and possibly learn something from them. And while it's there, it doesn't really do nothing. But after seeing that there's actually this Pokemon contest going on in the Hoenn region, yes, we're going to Hoenn again. It's crazy how we've been to Hoenn just as many times as we've been to Galar and probably been to Hoenn more times for crying out loud. But still, they end up deciding to enter in this contest so that they can help Feebas become more beautiful. And this is where we really get to see Chloe's true growth and development. Because earlier in the series, she said that she didn't really care about Pokemon. Go mentioned she used to care about them when she was younger, but as she got older, she grew cold to them. But seeing here, she sees how dedicated this trainer is, along with her feedback, for wanting to do great in this contest. So she ends up deciding to suit up and help them basically get to where they want to be and reach their goal. Even, you know, going all out the way of teaching this girl how to swim, while Ash and Go teach the feedback how to be more elegant so that they can do great in this contest and this moment that i really like was when go was like yo i thought you didn't like pokemon and here she's like shut up go but in reality she is actually starting to see the good in pokemon and just see how much dedication that they want to put into getting better really inspire her to keep moving along with her dad also mentioning you know if you don't try you'll never succeed succeed and i think that also relates to her goal as you know she isn't really trying to do anything with pokemon yet but she may start experimenting. There's also the small detail of the prism scale throughout this episode. Basically, they never mention it as the prism scale. They just say, oh, one of his scales is a different color. But for all the viewers, obviously, we know this is the prism scale. Also, this is the first time that Chloe travels with Ash and Go to another region. And I said this in my Chloe's Gold video. I'm hoping that she starts to travel with them. Not maybe all the time, but just occasionally. And build her way up to traveling with them full time. And this was the start of it. And I'm really liking this so much. Like, it's, it's so great seeing these three characters together. Ash and Go's dynamic is already amazing, but adding Chloe to this group really does bring some diversity and just some amazing differences. My bro, Niall Kelly, shout out to you, bro, for saying this, actually mentions that Ash, Chloe, and Go are the new Ash, Brock, and Misty, basically, where Ash has taken on the Brock role, being the mentor figure. Go is the Ash, because they've been hinting at Go kind of being like the main character, even with him getting all the starters, possibly. And just with him being this new trainer, learning the ropes. And Chloe's like the Misty. Where, yeah, not goal-wise, she's not like Misty. Where Misty knew what she wanted to do and everything. But in regards to this, he's, she's kind of like the Misty as she gets annoyed by Go. And she's kind of like the, you know, the, the one that keeps them straight. Because, you know, Ash and Brock always had some crazy moments where Misty was kind of like the straight person to help them get through their problems. But with all that said, the trainers end up going to Hoenn. Slateport City actually and end up taking on this water type contest now note this isn't like an average or regular contest and I don't think that this is the only time we'll see some type of contest I feel like they will come back to Hoenn or even Sinnoh and see real contests like that Dawn and May end up doing and speaking of Dawn this trainer right here who's watching looks awfully a lot like Dawn Pokemon I'm just saying hashtag bring Dawn back <laughs> But unfortunately, Team Rocket had to show up and ruin the dreams of Ash's Kingler coming back. Gosh dang. But to be honest, Team Rocket were kind of this 
I didn't like Team Rocket's part so much in this episode because they felt kind of forced into this. Like, they kind of were just so happy to be in the Hoenn. And then, yeah, I don't know. I, didn't, I just didn't really, it didn't feel that great. Normally, they do some amazing stuff with Team Rocket. But this felt like, like the original series through Diamond and Pearl Team Rocket where they're just kind of following Ash. So, Team Rocket weren't that great. But they end up trying to catch all the Pokemon. And the girl and her feet bash, they do do their performance. And they're actually doing better thanks to Chloe. But in the end... Feebash involves into my low tick and ends up stopping Team Rocket. And that's what I mean by it. It was kind of like a generic Team Rocket plot. I know some people kind of have an issue saying, wait a minute, there was no trades happening. Like, why, why did Feebash evolve? Don't forget, in the games, there are two ways to evolve Feebash. The first way is through trading, but the second way is through beauty. And what I believe, yeah, it did evolve with the prism scale too. But what I believe happened is after all their hard work and training to make Feebash more appealing and how the audience took it like at first they were like oh that looks like an ugly pokemon but afterwards they were like oh it's actually doing pretty good it's pretty cute i feel like feebash became beautiful in that moment and that's why it evolved once team rocket blast off the girl and her model took end up winning and that's pretty much the episode but what i really liked about the ending is ash go and chloe where they're just standing there looking at how proud they are of being able to help this trainer get a model tick and chloe ends up stating pokemon really are amazing 31 episodes, but her character is finally changing and becoming more like, for one, she's already liking Ash and Go a lot more. All the way out to the point where she came for them for help. And now, look, she's even starting to like Pokemon. I feel like this next opening, because next week's episode, we're getting a new opening. I feel like this we're actually going to see Chloe along with Ash and Go. I always stated this before. If you look at the opening now, you see Ash and Go are in front, and Chloe's kind of in the back, not with them. But she's still traveling. We're now here. We'll see all three of them together in the opening. And I'm just so excited to see that. I'm glad that her character is finally getting the growth and development that she deserves. And kind of like how I've been saying with Go. Where Go still learning to become a trainer too. For example, when Ash caught Firefetch. Riolu was getting beat up. And Go was like, just give up. But Ash was like, no, I believe in Riolu. Go mentioned, believe. The same thing happens here. This time, Go catches Wingle. And Carlo is just like, you know, why, why are you catching Pokemon? Go's like... Because I need to go to my dream. Here she mentions dream. It's like a cycle. Ash is teaching Go stuff. And now Go is teaching Chloe stuff. So I'm, I'm really liking how they're handling it. And technically in this episode, Chloe ended up helping other trainers as well. So her goal may do with something like with helping other people in Pokemon. I'm not too sure what it will be though. But I'm just liking the spiral that Ash, Go, and Chloe are having. And I really do agree with Nia Kelly's point about them being the Ash, Brock, and Misty. Oh, man, I'm just so excited to see what happens with their growth in the future. But that's all I can really say for this episode, guys. I really did enjoy, like, the nice Chloe moments. I got to say she was the highlight of this episode, growing to become more of a companion. And next week, we are getting a new opening. And this is going to be the first episode that Ash and Pikachu do not appear in. So let's see where that goes. In the comment section down below, let me know what y'all thought of this episode. I'd love to hear. Thank you all for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Trade Man 1. Peace out.